I'm a British artist. I work mainly with photography and film, um, and I live in Kiev, Ukraine. And most of my practice involves uh, making and disseminating photo books to targeted audiences in order to impact on certain issues that I feel personally very strongly about. I have to say, I'd made about six or seven of these um, book projects with a targeted audience in mind, and those have ranged from uh, books about mental health in the British Army to waste disposal in Corby in Northampton to wealth inequality to all sorts of different subjects. And I'd always felt very strongly and passionately that actually, um, even though it was very difficult to gauge the impact of my work, it was having an impact somehow, somewhere. But when the war started, um, I'd only just completed my book, Stop Tanks With Books. I was living in Kiev. I'd sent it out to the international community, 750 copies of this big hardback book to celebrities, to um, media, to uh, international politicians, uh, NATO members. Uh, celebrities, everyone I thought had it in their power to help Ukraine. So you imagine I spent several years making this book. I get it out in order to garner support for Ukraine's fight for independence. And I get it out to the target audience literally days before the war starts. And then I wake up in my apartment in Kiev on the 24th to the sound of air raid sirens and news that multiple explosions coming from Russia all over Ukraine. At that point then, everyone felt useless, futile, you know, and it really throws into uh, extreme doubt your own sense of um, power, you know, what can I, you feel useless, you know, where does responsibility lie? Do I, do I join these people? Do I join these Ukrainians and make Molotov cocktails? Do I pick up a gun? Do I get out of the country as soon as possible in order to garner support from Britain or Germany or Poland or wherever? You know, where does responsibility lie? And in that particular context, with all that happening, I felt that the, the, at the bottom of that list of priorities for me as a man was to pick up a camera and start photographing what was happening. So in that context, I felt the photo books were kind of, in and of themselves, useless. You know, a luxury, actually. So that led to me making Postcode Ukraine, which was this charity that I set up, which is a kind of hybrid of humanitarian aid delivery within Ukraine and also uh, me documenting what's going on there at the same time. I'd sent 750 copies of Stop Tanks with books out to the international community. And although it had been used in protest marches by members of the European Parliament in Brussels, although it had been clearly warmly accepted by many many politicians, including Justin Trudeau. And although clearly it had some kind of platform, it was visible, you know, people were talking about it, people were writing about it. Um, nevertheless, um, in real terms, I felt it didn't really lead to any, any change whatsoever. You know, it certainly didn't stop any tanks. That was the context in which I found myself in March. I'd left Ukraine for a week or two with my partner. She'd said, get me out of here. So after a week in Ukraine, we left. And I was in March thinking, what do I do next? You know, feeling totally overwhelmed, traumatized, distraught. We'd left all our possessions in, in Ukraine. I fully expected never to be able to return. And then out of the blue, one of the recipients of the book, um, this amazing couple called Bill and Judy, who had collected my work, my photographs, maybe five or six years ago, um, got in touch and they said, what can we do to help, you know? And I said, well, I don't feel it's enough just to send me back to take pictures. You know, I think we need to do something which combines that process with humanitarian aid delivery somehow. So we're actually giving something to these people, not just taking away. And to my astonishment, they agreed to core fund this charity so um, I receive a wage um, and I get to deliver food, medicine, um, generators all along frontline towns. I'm within Kiev region, all sorts, all over Ukraine, basically. And that's been going on since, uh, since about April. Well, uh, it's really a continuation of my um, year-long collaboration with Professor Andrew Hoskins, who runs the course. 
we first connected um, about Afghanistan. So I was a war artist sent by the Imperial War Museum to be embedded, if you like, with the paratroopers, 16 Air Assault Brigade, way back in 2011. Following that experience, Andrew and I became aware of one another's work and were really interested in, in, in working together to make something which really explored the virtual reality of the media by which we experience conflict. And I've certainly been very aware of that, that parallel uh, reality presented by the media of, of the war in Ukraine as well. So we're looking to publish and realise a new project called Forgetting War which will deal both with Afghanistan and Ukraine and the way in which each of those conflicts has been um, viewed through the prism of, of media and what that means and how helpful or not that's been to understanding conflict and really trying to do something about it to make it, uh, to ameliorate conflict and the impact of conflict.